Hello and welcome to the stealth bug extravaganza of the release version of Payday 3. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, chances are most of these bugs have been fixed. Uh, if you are not, then most of these bugs still exist, probably assuming the patch doesn't release today or tomorrow or the day after that, which you probably won't. Um, regardless, uh, the title of this video says uh, Door slide bug or something like that. Door slam bug probably is what I'm going to title this, but um, that's only like 75-90% of this video uh, because that bug has a lot of depth and that's kind of what, I'm, what I want to mainly cover. However, there are some other stealth bugs that I do want to discuss and show in this video. Uh, and at the end, I want to show just because I figured I might as well pad the runtime a bit and, you know, show some other stuff. Uh, I want to show the route that I've been using to play Dirty Ice in self on Overkill. Because obviously you need to grind every ice 40 times in self, so I've been doing that because I am mentally ill. Um, and I decided this was the route I was going to take. So that's at the end of the video if you want to watch that. Uh, for the rest of this, we're going to be going over Under the Surface and 99 Boxes. These are the two examples I'm going to use for the Door Slam bug. There are a couple of 99 Boxes specific bugs in that video, uh, that part of the video as well. But um, for now, Under the Surface. So, the start of this run is pretty standard. Um, taking out the security room is first priority, as it always is. Uh, in this particular example, I use the Throwing Knife bug, which I have talked about uh, in some of the previous videos, but I haven't actually shown how to do it. It's literally just you throw the knife uh, when the red pager icon appears above the guard's head, you pick it up. That's it. Uh, later on I'll show how you can use this on other guards in the dirty ice section, but for now we're just going to go out. This is about the door slam bug. So, the door slam bug is quite unique in that it's incredibly powerful and incredibly versatile. Uh, most of the other bugs in this game that allow you to get guards stuck or make them stationary or do whatever uh, typically force the guard to be stuck in place and you can't do anything to free them or interrupt them at all except to kill them or get caught by them at which point it doesn't really help because you're using a pager to kill them in that way anyway so it doesn't it doesn't really help um, so if you get a guard stuck in a place where you can't get them free you kind of can't do anything about it the Dawson bug is unique in that it doesn't actually break the guard's pathing, it's a bug that like, exploits the guard pathing entirely. And the way this bug works, uh, I'll explain a little bit later on, uh, for now I'm just going to show you the simple uh, use case of this bug, which is when a guard is nearby, you open a door and then you slide into the door to slam the door shut, that's it. That's all you have to do. The guard will investigate the sound, he will walk through the door, if he doesn't walk through the door the bug doesn't work. If he walks through the door, he will become stuck in an infinite loop trying to investigate the door. Simple as that. Uh, if you want to stop the bug, you can open the door or interact with the door in any way, and like that will set the guard free once he finishes investigating the door, obviously. Um, and because the door itself is what's alerting the guard, uh, it actually alerts other nearby guards. So you'll see this a bit later on. Other guards will walk near the door and they will also become attracted to the door and become stuck in it. Uh, and that's kind of what makes this book so powerful because it allows you to create these kind of zones where guards, where every guard kind of just gets stuck. Um, however, because it requires a door and it requires you to slide into a door, it's not super useful in every map. Uh, some maps it has literally no use at all. Uh, no rest of the wicked, the, you probably can't find many uses for it. Um, maybe you could use it in like the downstairs part of the bank or something. I don't know, that's kind of stretching it. Um, you could use it to troll people, I guess, if you just want to lure guards into a really obnoxious place and just leave the guards there and just not tell people about it and just be like, oh my god, the guards are bugged. Uh, you could troll people with it, I guess. Doesn't make freak out people playing and people think you're a dick if you do it, but uh, you know. Um, generally, like I said, the best use of this is going to be under the surface and nightmare boxes because I'm just going to speed through most of this run. Uh, you can see that uh, I, set, I set up this bug on a few different doors and get the guards stuck. When I get downstairs, I set it up in a way that the lead guard gets stuck inside this room. And also, with this particular door, I showcase a, um, another aspect of this bug. Which is that sometimes 
You want to slam a door, but there isn't enough space to slide into it. But you know what you can do? You can sprint, gather a bit of speed, and then slam into the door, no matter how much space there is. And this is a little bit difficult, it's a little bit precise, but if you can do this, you can do this on any door in the game, regardless of how much space there is around. Obviously, you need to have enough space to be adjacent to the door, but if you can get adjacent to the door, you can slam any door in the game like this and trigger the bug. Um, now, I'm sure some of you might have already kind of been clocking on to the fact that this bug isn't necessarily related to the act of the guard investigating the door, it's actually related to the door slamming itself. And from what I can tell, the way this bug works is very, very simple and it's very, very dumb. And this allows us, and the way this bug works allows us to set up some um, very extravagant uses of this glitch, which I will showcase in the 99 boxes one. Um, Although the example that I record for 99 boxes is pretty bad actually, but you, you'll figure out what I mean. Um, basically, the way this book works is when you slam a door shut, the game never clears that the door has been slammed. So the game thinks that the door is being slammed every single time the door closes. What that means is every single time an NPC walks through that door, it will slam, and that alerts everybody nearby. So if you interact with the door it will fix the bug because obviously if you interact with it the game realises oh the door isn't being slammed anymore it's fine don't slam the door. But if you don't interact with the door you can just leave the door as it is and this allows you to create situations where you lure a guard into a room you slam a door and then Maybe you slam the other door into that room as well, which is what I did with the lead guard in this particular run. Uh, I slammed both doors shut so that if he tries to leave, no matter which door he tries to leave through, because sometimes the lead guard has pathing changes that force him to walk a different route, and that will interrupt this bug. Um, but if that happens, and he tries to walk through the other door, he's fucked. He can't leave that through that door either. So it sets up situations where the guards are more likely to be permanently stuck, but the exciting part is because of how this works, you can set traps. If you slam a door and there is nobody nearby, nobody will be alerted, but as soon as someone walks through that door, the bug activates because the door is permanently bugged until you interact with it again. So this means you can bug a door and then leave the door as is and just wait and just go do other stuff. And eventually, if a guard walks through that door at any point, the bug activates. And obviously this means this bug is actually more effective when you're in search mode because in search mode guards patrol outside their normal areas and they're more likely to like, you know, try and walk through doors and stuff like that. So this bug actually makes search mode easier because you can set up this bug on doors and then when search mode triggers, guards will just get stuck on that door. Um, and because they're more likely to m navigate all over the map, they're more likely to walk near a bugged door that is already being slammed, so it's more likely to build up all the guards in one place where you can just ignore them. Um, I'll be honest, I'm recording this commentary without watching the footage, uh, so Under the Surface is probably done by now, we're probably moving on to Nightmare Boxes. Uh, there is a funny uh, clip that I want to show you of the first run that I did of 99 boxes before I had to reset. I resetted once and it was because of this one fail and I want to show you this because it's really dumb. Uh, basically, the zipline got me caught and that's great because the zipline is the only way into the second area. Anyway, uh, the game is fantastic by the way. It's got no bugs at all and it's very flawless as you can tell from this video that I'm making. Um, so in 99 boxes, uh, the start of this is basically just like a normal run. Uh, I hack the phone of the guard on the right side, I then patrol around the whole outside because when you're near the containers, if the container has a zipline in it, you can see it glow through the wall. So all you need to do is just walk around the whole outside, like around the like containers surrounding the outside of the area, and if you, the zipline is there you'll see it. Uh, and that's a good idea anyway because the other guard with the uh, QR code is always in one of two places around the back of the building. So if you just patrol around the containers um, to like while looking for the zip line, you'll come across the guard with the QR code anyway. So you can kind of just do those two objectives at once, which is really convenient. You don't really need the zip line asset on this map. Saving under the surface, but 
you know. Um, it, it, it does help on this map though, like it really does, because it puts a zipline at the location where you need to set it up, so you don't need to look for it, but if you're, all, if you're playing solo, you're going to have to go around the whole map anyway to look for the other QR code guys. So it does. As far as I'm concerned, if you're playing solo, there's not really much point. If you're playing with other people, maybe consider it, because then, you know, it speeds it up a bit, but whatever. Actually, maybe not even them, because if you're playing with multiple people, you can just have one person go grab the zipline and be, have that be their objective. I don't know. It kind of seems pointless. The point is, uh, the door that I'm talking about is this door here. I, I'm i going to pretend that I'm showing the door on screen. I have no fucking clue what's being shown on screen right now. Um, it's the side door into the warehouse. You'll see in the footage, I wait for this particular guard to walk through the door. If you kill that guard, the bug never works because he's the only guard that walks through that door. If you kill him, you cannot get this to work. So you need to leave that guy alive, 100%. And then there are two ways to slam the door. The simple way is you sl slide into the door from the outside, you open the door so it's facing outside, and then you slide into it from outside. The other way is you do what I said before about building up speed and then sprinting into it. You open the door inwards, and then you just sprint into the side of it. Door slams, you're done. And it doesn't matter if the guard that walks through the door is nearby, because like I said, eventually he's going to walk through that door. Eventually he's going to trigger the bug. So what you can do is, I think in the, I think in this particular run he gets alerted by it and the bug triggers instantly, but um, if that doesn't happen because sometimes he just stands inside the door and doesn't open it and it just is really weird and buggy, um, but if it doesn't trigger straight away, just leave it. Set up the zipline, start doing the objectives in the second half of the map, at some point he's going to walk through the door again, and when he does, it's, it's done, right? You've already set up the bug. As long as you don't use that door again, like, you don't have to worry about it. The bug's already done. Um, so, yeah. Also, bonus bug that I want to show here um, in 99 boxes. If you get this particular uh, storage area, the forklift, you can use the forklift. If a guard walks in front of the forklift and you activate the forklift, it will push him against the wall and he will get stuck inside the crate. He cannot see anything unless you stand on top of the crate and like you're standing right above him. He is completely stuck. He cannot react to sound. He cannot do anything. He's completely stuck. Another fantastic bug in this game. I originally did that because I thought it would be funny if it killed the guard, but uh, no, it just got him stuck and then I was like, oh, that's cool. Anyway. This game is great. Uh, and now, to end off, I'm just gonna leave you with a five minute run of uh, Dirty Ice. Unedited, because I can't bother editing this video anymore. Uh, I say that, I've not even edited the video yet. <laughs> I'm still just recording commentary for it. Uh, but I'm just gonna leave the whole five minute run to play out. And uh, this is kind of the route that I've been using to do Stealth Overkill. It's not the fastest route at all. There are faster routes you can do, but this one gets all of the guards um, uh, basically eliminated by two minutes. So you have complete freedom to just run around the back halls and do whatever the fuck you want. Um, you can do the heist in under five minutes this way. Like I said, not the fastest. There are people that do it in like under two minutes, under three minutes, under one, like one and a half minutes. Uh, you can do this heist really fast if you know what you're doing, you have a team, whatever. If you're playing it by yourself and you just want a brain, relatively brainless um, approach to it, then you can do it this way. Uh, if you get a different spawn, then it's basically the same thing, just do the same steps but in the order that they're closest to you. So if you spawn near the alley, then just bug out the alley guard first and then do the other alley guard and then, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the main thing is you need the skill that answers pages when you take down someone. If you take down the lead guard when you have the skill that answers pages when you do a takedown, it bugs the lead guard's pager and it never goes off again. Um, so you only spend one pager on the lead guard, and then if you want to, you can spend another pager killing someone else. Um, so if you fuck something up, you got an extra pager. Uh, if you want to leave them alive, you can also do the door bug, the door slam bug, uh, on either the side dot into the building. I would recommend doing the side dot into the building and the alley gate, because sometimes he walks through the alley gate, and if he does, then it bugs him out that way. If he walks into the building, it bugs him out that way. 
and you have so many windows around that area that you can get in and out of the building through those windows instead, so it doesn't really matter if you don't use the gate or the door. Either way, I'm gonna leave now. I'm gonna edit this video, I'm gonna upload this, and I want you to know that uh, I have upgraded to a 1440p monitor, so hey, what are you doing? Uh, future videos and streams will be in higher resolution, with a higher bitrate, and a higher quality, so um... Have fun with that. I'm gonna let the rest of this 30 ice room play out that I assume is playing right now. For all I know, it could still be 99 boxes. Goodbye. That's three. That's four. if you want, but you can always try for more. 